So first, I think it's important that you understand you know, what the adrenal glands are. We hear this term adrenal fatigue or adrenal burnout. In the medical community, the term adrenal fatigue or adrenal burnout is oftentimes laughed at. It's, it's oftentimes considered to be a fallacy or a kind of one of those um, uh, purple unicorns, so to speak, a, a thing that doesn't exist that people just kind of make claims that they have. But in reality, adrenal fatigue or adrenal burnout is a very, very real issue. And so let's first talk about the adrenal glands themselves. So if we look at this diagram, you can see here the kidneys. On top of your kidneys sit this triangular shaped organ that's called your adrenal gland. Now it's made out of two major pieces. It's made out of an inner layer. You can see here detailed in pink, that's called the adrenal medulla and it's made out of an outer layer or cortex, oftentimes referred to as the adrenal cortex. Now, simply put, the adrenal cortex produces some of the hormones of stress, most notably the adrenal cortex, just like its name, cortisol is responsible for the release of cortisol, whereas the medulla is responsible for adrenaline and noradrenaline. And some people call it epinephrine and norepinephrine. So these are the, the hormones of acute stress, right? Cortisol, noradrenaline, and adrenaline. And so these glands, these adrenal glands that sit on top of the kidneys produce uh, they produce other, other, other hormones as well. For example, the mineral corticoids. Um, we won't get so deep into that tonight. But these help regulate your water and your blood pressure. And then also DHEA, which is a, a hormone. D, a DHEA stands for dehydroepiandrosterone. And it's a hormone that is a precursor in women, helps to produce estrogen, progesterone in men helps to produce testosterone, so it's a precursor hormone to those things. So again, cortisol, though, is what we're really gonna be talking about tonight with adrenal um, fatigue and dysfunction. And so what happens, how we go about producing cortisol, because again, these are stress hormones, so it's important that you under, that I can't emphasize this enough, these are stress hormones. So the greater the amount of stress that you have, Generally speaking, the greater amount of response from these adrenal glands that you're going to get in the form of increased levels of corticosteroids and increased adrenaline, noradrenaline. But the feedback loop or the message is actually driven by the brain to a large extent by the hypothalamus. So in, in your brain stem here, you have a hormone called corticotropic releasing hormone, and that hormone stimulates the posterior pituitary gland to produce another hormone called ACTH, adrenocorticotropic hormone. Again, the word's gonna sound confusing and it's gonna get confusing, so I wanna simplify this. But my point is, is this is your brain, okay? And it's your brain that stimulates the adrenal cortex here. So we've got the adrenal cortex is stimulated to produce glucocorticoids or cortisol, corticosteroids, right? So. How do we make sense of that for you? If you've ever had a steroid where you went to the doctor and they gave you a steroid injection because of pain, or they gave you oral steroids because of pain, those are corticosteroids that are generally administered through prescription medication. So the same type of drug, if you will, right? Only your body produces it. A lot of people just don't know that. So when you go to the doctor because you're in pain, you get a corticosteroid, what they're actually doing is giving you high doses of what your body already naturally produces. And so think of cortisol as your body's natural fire truck. It's what your body uses to put out inflammation. It's also what your body uses to mobilize more energy when you're in danger. So cortisol causes several different types of, of chemical affects. And one of them is, uh, of course, is to elevate your blood glucose or your blood sugar so that your body can take proper action. And another one of the effects is, is it's an anti-inflammatory. So let's talk next about what can cause adrenal fatigue. Um, adrenal fatigue is caused by, again, chronic stress being one of the biggest elements to this. But what is stress? If we look at, at what stress is, you know, it's this word, it's this term that, that commonly gets used and thrown about, but what exactly is stress? Stress, is it good, is it bad? 
You know, I, th I think it's important to have that conversation. So there's good stress, okay? That's oftentimes referred to as hormesis, which is when you have a certain amount of stress that can lead to good things, you know? Um, and, and so an example of hormetic stress or hormesis would be exercise, right? So if you exercise, the benefit, the good benefit, right, would be increased muscle mass, strength, increased strength. Exercise also improves blood sugar control, right? So these are all examples of a good effect that stress can bring through exercise. Now there are bad effects as well. And so an example uh, in this case is if we overtrain, right, we, you can get injury. Okay, if you work out too aggressively, it can start to disrupt your sleep. It can lead to hyperinflammation and, and all the consequences of that. So think of stress as being both good and bad. And, and really, you know, if we want to really think about it, it's a scale, right? On one end and on the other end, you want good stress and you want bad stress to kind of counterbalance each other. You don't want, to, want one to be higher than the other because it's when that happens that we get thrown into this chronic state of stress where overall our bodies start to stimulate the adrenal glands to produce more and more stress hormone, i.e. cortisol, right? So I gave you an example. So chronic stress could be any of these things on this board here, right? So chronic stress could be a chronic infection, right? So one of the things many people are talking about right now is the, is the long C, right? The long viral infection, that's chronic, right? But there are other plenty of other examples of chronic infection. There's Lyme disease is a perfect example of a type of chronic infection. Some people have candida overgrowth or candidiasis it's pervasive, then it's chronic, right? So there are a lot of different examples of, of how chronic infections can create an overstimulation of the immune system causing increased stress over time, right? We also have hypoglycemic states. So where this, this is a, an example of good and bad stress because if your blood sugar drops too low, it's good that your body stimulates cortisol release to help dump sugar back into the bloodstream. Um, but if your blood sugars are chronically low all the time, then that's not necessarily good because too much cortisol can start to create problems. So again, it's, it's about the balance between the good and the bad. We know that chronic inflammation and anything that can cause chronic inflammation can contribute to the adrenal glands being overworked, so to speak. So chronic inflammation, this can be caused by food, it can be caused by chemical exposures, it can be caused by excessive exercise, it can be caused by lack of sleep, it can be caused by um, dehydration, right? There's just a number of different things that can contribute to chronic inflammatory process. And, and of course, chronic inflammation can also cause chronic pain, as can other things. So sometimes people get into a state of chronic pain, and again, a number of reasons why that can happen. You could have injury like a lumbar uh, spine problem or, or a disc injury. You could have a neuropathy or a nerve pain that's chronic. You could have chronic pain like a fibromyalgia type disease, which can contribute to chronic corticosteroid release from your adrenal glands. And then some people, what do they do to manage the infection to manage the inflammation, to manage the chronic pain, they take steroids. And, and a lot of doctors will prescribe steroids, in my opinion, way too aggressively. They'll prescribe steroids before they look for why these problems exist in many cases. And, um, and so steroids are very powerful drugs that can stomp out inflammation, right? Can help really help a person's chronic pain level and can mask a person's infection. It doesn't get rid of the infection, but it certainly can mask the inflammation that's produced as a result of the infection. So if you, if you think about this, the chronic infection can create chronic inflammation. Chronic pain is chronic inflammation, right? And all of these are forms of chronic stress, which are commonly, again, medicated with an artificial external corticosteroid that suppresses a person's symptoms and doesn't and really leaves them in a place where they're hanging where they're not really fixing the problem but the drug is very very powerful now we'll talk more about chronic steroid use in just a minute and the impacts that it can have but let's talk about some of the other 
causes of adrenal fatigue first. So gluten sensitivity is one. There's actually a number of research studies that link. There's a type of adrenal insufficiency, and let me maybe it be important if I if I clarify the difference there real quick too. Um, let's make some room. So there's the term adrenal fatigue, and it's not the same as adrenal insufficiency. Insufficiency is actually a medical term oftentimes referring to as Addison's disease. Now, Addison's disease is an autoimmune condition um, that leads to hypoadrenalism or your adrenal glands start to shut down and they're not actually, actually properly producing adequate amounts of stress hormone. This is largely associated with celiac disease, meaning many with celiac disease also have Addison's and vice versa. Many with Addison's also have celiac disease. And one of the prevailing thoughts is that people with Addison's should be investigated whether or not they have celiac disease and, and embark upon a gluten-free diet. Because if you have Addison's, um, there, are, there are case reports, numerous case reports in medical literature that show that individuals with Addison's going on a gluten-free diet see their Addison's disease improve. And I've seen this actually in my own practice a number of times where people with prior being diagnosed with Addison's found they were actually able to largely recover their adrenal gland function as a result of going gluten-free. So again, an insufficiency, when you hear this term insufficiency, this really refers more to the Addison's aspect. And if you think about um, about adrenal function in the medical world, right? There's really two types of adrenal dysfunction. One is Addison's and the other is Cushing's. And Cushing's is, is a little bit different. Cushing's is generally uh, where you make too many adrenal hormones and Addison's is where you don't make enough. So oftentimes what happens is when people have adrenal dysfunction, they go to the doctor. If you don't fit this definition or this definition, they kind of tell you, you don't have a problem with your adrenals, even though you might. So again, just a little bit of clarification there between adrenal insufficiency, which again is more of the medical Addison's aspect versus adrenal fatigue. Now, other things that can disrupt the, the adrenal glands and create long-term fatigue, one is nutritional deficits, so poor diet. And we've seen this in numerous occasions, and there are a number of nutrients specifically that um, are very critical for your body's ability to be able to produce cortisol. And we'll talk about those in just a minute too. And then you have chronic caffeine use because caffeine as a stimulant will overstimulate over time, it will overstimulate your adrenal glands. So any, not just caffeine, but other stimulants as well. So if you're on drugs, um, you know, for ADD or ADHD, you know, some of those stimulant medications, these are things that can, that can really hammer your adrenal glands and, and work them to death, so to speak. And then you have fast paced lifestyle. So, you know, in, in the U.S. today, we're especially guilty of this, you know, eating through lunch, not taking breaks, working, you know, long, long hours without adequate, you know, without adequate rest or without adequate recovery time. So that fast paced lifestyle can be part of this as well. Lack of sunshine, um, of course, lack of sunshine regulates hormone production, particularly cortisol productions. Hey, don't forget to check out the rest of the series right here. Make sure you hit subscribe below. And as always, thanks for tuning in.